Hey everybody, it's me, Chris Donna. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If you are new here, hit the subscribe button. If you're not new here, welcome back friends and family. And if you're not new here and you haven't subscribed, what does a girl have to do to make you commit to her? Anyways, today I am going to be painting this piece. I am going to walk you through this piece before we paint it to show you that I know that this piece looks like it's a vintage or antique piece, but it's not. And I am going to show you the telltale signs of a reproduction. Now this is made with some really nice solid oak around it, but there are parts that it's not solid wood. So I'm gonna show you why I have recognized this as a reproduction, and then we are going to paint this. So, when we paint this today, we are going to be using some, again, we're gonna be using some Daydream Apothecary paint. Oops. We're gonna be using some Daydream Apothecary paint with this, which is a, that's, Daydream Apothecary paint is a chalk and clay paint. I think we're going to maybe do some stenciling on the drawers. I like to just fly by the seat of my pants. And I think we're going to do some clearly aligned decor stamps from Redesign with Prima as well. So without further ado, we're gonna go over and I'm gonna show you how I've identified this as a reproduction and then we're gonna get started. Stay here. Stay here, please, or else. I wanna show you how to spot a reproduction. So this is a vintage piece and you can see how there are nails in this handle, right? That is how that handle is put in, by being nailed in from the front. This looks almost exactly like that one, except it doesn't have nails. It is put in in the back with Phillips screws. Phillips head screws are a more modern one and normally with vintage and antique pieces, they are the flat head slotted screws. So that's one telltale sign. And then also the bottom of that drawer is MDF and that's not typical of something that's vintage or antique. And then if you see the sides of these drawers, the drawer side is also an MDF and it is put in with nails, which you can see they are nails from an air compressor. They're not, they're not dovetailed and dovetailed doesn't necessarily mean that it's a vintage, but when you have it and it is nailed in like that, you know that that's a reproduction. The back of this piece is particle board and that is also a telltale sign because in vintage and antique pieces, it was a piece of at least plywood back there. Also, if you see the symmetry in this piece, that is also a sign that it was carved by a machine and wasn't hand carved. When you have vintage or antique pieces and they were hand carved, symmetry is not a thing. As a human, you try to get it as symmetrical as you can, but it's almost nearly impossible to replicate something exact unless you're a machine. Now that I have kind of walked you through how to spot a reproduction, let's get started on this. We are going to remove all of the hardware. I'm gonna clean this really well. And the cleaner that I'm using is also a deglosser. And this is going to help with taking any kind of shine off of here. The paint that I will be using today is called Daydream Apothecary. And the color I'm gonna use is Deadly Nightshade. It is a deep, it's not a navy blue. It's almost like an indigo color because it does pull a little bit of purple. So we are going to do some blending on here, but I wanna lay down the foundation first. And so I am gonna put two coats of Deadly Nightshade where I want that to be. What we're doing is we're doing kind of a blend where we go from dark to light. And so I'm going to lay down two coats of Deadly Nightshade on the bottom and kind of up on the side so that way it is where I want that dark to be on this piece. The next color I'm gonna use is called C. La Vie, and it is a nice aqua blue type color. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna overlap where that deadly nightshade was going up the sides. And we're gonna put this kind of more towards the center of the piece going up because we wanna create a gradient look. And so that is why this is our, kind of our middle ground medium toned color. And then our deadly nightshade is our darker color. And then we're gonna go in with a lighter color, a more warm white, 
which is the color Comfort Zone. So this is Comfort Zone by Daydream Apothecary, and that is going to go up at the top. The look that I want on this piece is more of, it almost to where it emulates, where it looks like there's light shining down from the top down to the bottom of the piece. So that in my head is what I'm visualizing here when I'm placing my colors. This paint is a clay and chalk mix, and that means that it is designed to be able to layer and wet distress and pull back and do a bunch of different artistic type finishes and blending. But if you want a more solid look and you don't want to pull back as much, you're going to allow it to sit a little bit longer to dry. So I allowed this to sit overnight just to truly dry and get all the moisture out of that clay and chalk mix. And then I went in the next day to blend. So the first thing I did was add just a little bit of de deadly nightshade to the center of that bottom piece so that we could have some moisture. And then I added a little bit of comfort zone in the center so that we can create a highlight. Cause remember, we're trying to create it to where it looks like there's a light shining down on the piece. So I'm just going over that area that I just put some deadly nightshade on and putting some comfort zone there. And I'm just kind of brushing it in. So I'm using a different brush for each color. And then I'm gonna go in with my deadly nightshade brush. I'm gonna miss the area just a little bit and I'm gonna start working these colors together. I don't want it to be a super light blend, but I want it to be subtle enough. So I'm going to mist it and then I'm going to take a clean dry neutral brush and I'm going to just blend that bottom together. Then we're gonna move up and we're going to add some Cila V into the center and we're gonna push that Cila V out over top of some of those areas with the deadly nightshade. So that way we can create some shading over there. And so we're gonna lay down some of that Cila V. Then I'm going to mist the area and I'm going to take my deadly nightshade brush. Now I want you to understand that I'm not re-dipping this brush every time in the paint. I'm just using the brush with the pre-existing paint on it to create some shadows and blend everything. You don't need to keep re-dipping your brush in the paint to make these work together. So I am just toggling between the two brushes and blending them together. And then I'm taking my clean dry neutral brush, which I just did. And I'm kind of working those bottom areas that we've already blended together to really smooth them. Now I am working my way to the top and this is deadly nightshade. I did dip my brush in more paint so that I could add a little bit to those sides. I'm going in with Cila V and I'm kind of just going over where that deadly nightshade is. I'm taking my Cila V brush and I'm just kind of going over the under area where that comfort zone is. And now I'm going to work that Cila V up into that comfort zone. So the top of this is not going to necessarily be that pure white. It is going to turn to kind of a lighter blue, which is fine. That's what we want. And so I'm just misting this paint. The thing about this paint is that it's going to reactivate, reconstitute if you spray water. And so it's really good for blending. So I'm just misting it with a little bit of water and I'm adding just a little bit more of that deadly nightshade at the top. We're working these two colors together so that we can create a really gradual, natural blend. And so here we are with the C La Vie, just kind of going over top of that deadly nightshade. Now I'm going to go in with my comfort zone and I'm going to just start kind of working all three of those colors together. The thing with blending is that I think sometimes we overthink things. Don't overthink it. You've got that rag, which you could see me having that rag. And what I do is when I start blending these blues into the comfort zone, I wipe off my rag regularly. So that way I can just kind of keep it to where it doesn't have too much blue on it and I'm just misting it and I'm just working these paints together, going in circles, horizontal, vertically. This paint works together so well. It really makes blending just super, super amazing. Now that we've taken the time to work those outsides together, we are going to work on the center. So again, this is, we're gonna mist it. I am taking this 
brush that was my comfort zone brush. Remember I said it's gonna turn into kind of a lighter blue and that's what we wanted. And then I'm going to take my clean dry neutral brush that I have used for all of this and I'm going to mist my piece and just do a final smooth on the entire piece. Now, if I wanted to add a little bit more white to the top, I absolutely could. I could dip my brush into comfort zone and I could put it on the top there so that I could lighten that up. But we're gonna move on to the sides and I am going to be using some Redesign with Prima decor stamps and their silver ink. This is perfect for the side of this piece, like perfect, perfect, perfect. So I didn't have to do anything. It's a whole sheet. I pulled the protective backing off and now I'm just dabbing lightly with the silver ink over top of the stamp. So that way when I flip it upside down, I am going to be able to stamp the side of this piece. Now I'm going to flip it over and carefully place it where I want it to go. And then I'm going to push down with my hands and I have a brayer that I am going to go over that other protective layer. So I didn't take the other protective backing off of it, but I'm gonna go over it with a brayer and that way it can, when we're rolling over it, it creates equal pressure and then it stamps properly. So I'm going to carefully pull this off and there we are. I'm gonna repeat the process. It is, this stamp is perfect for the side of this piece. So I'm gonna repeat the process. You will want to allow this ink to dry overnight. And if you want it to be permanent, you're going to seal it with a water-based sealer because it is only semi-permanent. Give it ample time to dry, otherwise it is going to smear. Now I'm going in with Dream Coat and I am going to seal this entire piece. This paint does need to be sealed, but Dream Coat is the top coat that is made by Daydream Apothecary and it is super user friendly. I use a brush and just lightly go over it with thin layers. You don't want to use a sponge or something with a lot of pressure when you're top coating this kind of paint, a paint with clay and chalk in it because it will reactivate or it will pull your paint back because it's designed to wet distress. So use a brush and a light hand when you are sealing this kind of paint. Okay, everybody, this piece is done. This video is done. I'm gonna move over here while I'm talking so that you guys can really take a good look at this piece. But we have done all the blending. It kind of looks like there's light coming down from here and shine. That's, that was the, the premise of why I put the stuff where I did so that I could have some light coming down here or make it look like that anyway. But I hope you guys enjoyed that. Everything I use is in the description below. And until next time, happy creating, everybody. Have an amazing week, and I will see you later. Bye. Hey, darling, can I tell you what's been on my mind? Sick and tired of the nine to five in the city light. Hey, darling, we could get out of town, see the beautiful world around. See it now. Pack our bags and get in that car. Leave a little note and we'll drive real far. Let's get out, we can leave this city. Let's drive to the open air. Yeah, the countryside is so pretty.